Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. Well, we're going to get back into the third part of Imaginations. Now, I realize that we made a mistake in the last couple of videos and we got them switched up. In fact, we got a little uh, email about that. It said, Hi, Jim. I so love how God arranges things so wonderfully. Just recently, I felt prompted to go back and look at Im imagination some more. And then it says here, uh, your newest topic was just that. I'm a Karis, Colorado graduate, and I've heard Andrew teach on it many times and always love it. You've brought out some verses uh, that for some reason I didn't even realize involved imagination. I just love that. Anyway, when you started this last Friday, uh, the 26th, you must have been just a little confused because you said a couple of times this was imaginations too. You mentioned a couple of things you thought you had already shared, but I bet there was more in the first one you didn't realize you didn't share that we'd all like to hear. <laughs> this is good. I have a grace experience to share, uh, but I'm still waiting for the whole thing to play out before I share it. I know the result will be amazing. Thank you for sharing, Jim. I'm so grateful that this has been put on your heart to teach your adventures in grace have impacted me greatly. Well, yes, that's true. And um, we did uh, make a mistake. And so we're going to correct that. And on the YouTube videos, which I encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube videos and bring other people into these. In fact, uh, after we're done with imaginations, just so you know, we're going to go back to some things that we did at the very beginning, not because we don't have things to continue with, but just because newer people are coming and they need to hear those first, oh, five or six videos. And then there's some things that we want to add to it as we're growing and developing and able to e actually teach you better and share better things that will help you to begin to experience God. So already uh, that last phrase right there or thought is number one, one of the reasons why we do Adventures in Grace so that people can begin to experience God uh, more tangibly in their life. Uh, we are supposed to experience him as a real person, because he is. And uh, so just as a husband and wife, you could say, would be able to say, no, we married each other. We didn't marry each other's love letters. Love letters are very important. Of course, today we've got phones, and so we just call and we text which has some similarity to it. But years ago, it was love letters that you would send. And of course, you had a period of time that you had to wait for the mail to be able to get there. What if you were overseas and it took a couple of weeks? Well, then you'd be writing letters and sharing thoughts. And those thoughts were great and the letters were informative and they held your heart to the very things that you were that were dear to you. In fact, probably you reread them maybe even many times. But you still didn't marry those letters. You married the person. And everything about this amazing, wonderful Bible that was put together for us and written and inspired by the Holy Spirit through men that wrote is for our admonition that we might grow and develop where God becomes real to us. And the same way individuals had experiences yesterday, we also are able to have experiences today and tomorrow. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, real quickly, so our time isn't absorbed just in these few thoughts here. Number two, the more real something is to you, the more of a, an allegiance you have to it. Very simply, the default mechanism on a computer means that that's what always, if anything happens, it always goes back to the default. The default mechanism on a human being is the things that are real to you. The patterns of life, what you've chosen to believe is real, where you're making your choices based on how you think is what you usually go back to. That's why we've got to reformat ourselves to the Word of God, to the truth of God, to the relationship that we have with Christ. So these messages are helping you to re-identify the real kind of God-like faith that produces results. And therefore, number three, we're able to share those results with others. It's so important to share the testimonies of your relationship with God with other people. Now, we always start out with, and will again, Matthew chapter 11, verse 
a 27 to 30, which just really shares with you why we're doing these videos. So, so good. And it says, and Jesus resumed talking, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son, intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the father like the son, nor the son like the father. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired and worn out and burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, what a wonderful invitation for every human soul to have a relationship with the Father God, just like Jesus had, where he produced result after result after result. I'm telling you, this inward connection that we have to the blood of Jesus and this finished work of Christ shows up on the outside with not only a happier soul, a more peaceful life, <clears throat> but thank God it shows up with God influencing everything you do that's called miracle signs and wonders. And these things are not uh, just special, they're normal and to be expected. Well, jumping back into imaginations, hey, part three, that's right. I'm going to read again Ephesians 4, 17 and 19, so we can see it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Now, futility of the mind means perversion of reality. You see, this is the reason why Paul made statements, even in Ephesians chapter 4, regarding, and a little bit further, regarding renewing your mind. He said, put off the old man and put on the new man. Now, the idea of putting it on might seem a little bit silly, like you're a put on, you're a fake. Well, you're not faking if you're putting on the truth of God, reality. The fake of reality, the falsity of reality is what the world has accepted as true concerning sin, sickness, disease, the struggle of life, impoverishment, uh, living under depression, and so on and so forth. These are all a result of the fall. Listen, Adam, uh, the Garden of Eden was a paradise for a reason. Because there were no difficulties, there was no chaos there, there was no drama there. Adam and Eve, their soul continued to flourish because they were enjoying the very presence and reality of God. So the futility of the mind of the rest of the Gentiles, meaning the world system, the way the world spins. I know that sounds a little bit like a soap opera uh, um, uh, title, the way the world spins. But the, the, the pattern of the world is not the pattern of God. This is one of the reasons why we have to be very careful saying, well, this is what I want, and this is what I want, and this is what I want about this world. Because if you had more of Jesus, maybe those things you really wouldn't care about and you wouldn't want. And this is the subtlety of the way the world traps us in a perversion of reality, where we're distracted on things that really aren't important. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to sit in a room all day and pray, you know, no. Our prayer, you know this as we've talked, prayer is interaction with God. What we're endeavoring to teach is a constant interaction with God, but I'm endeavoring to open up your heart, your mind, your imagination to the idea that God actually wants to interact with you in a very real and tangible way. This isn't just interacting with God by reading the Bible. The Bible is giving you stories and thoughts that produce imaginations. And they should change the way you see yourself. So Paul says, don't walk as the rest of the Gentiles in the futility of their mind, the perversion of reality. Having their understanding darkened, which means having your imagination covered up. Darkened, your imagination darkened. 
darkens, you can look at and say, my imagination is darkened by the perversion of the world. You know, you can see individuals, the way that they talk, the way, the way their thought processes are, the vulgarity that they constantly use in all of their language. And you just look at that and there's something about that that just causes you to say, ooh, you know, that's just like, that's so dark. The way someone chooses to think can be so dark. And the way you choose to think then has enlightened your imagination. So you've got a picture of life that's not alive and beautiful and fun and exciting and enjoyable in Christ, but it's dark. It comes from possibly a past of abuse, a past of living maybe in a home that was also very dark. The presence of evil or darkness pervaded the home. Things never worked out. Prayers never worked. We were always hurting constantly. You know, I, I listen to John Lake. I, I read, excuse me, listen, meaning I listen to the thoughts that he has as I read a lot about what he says. And I remember going back to his childhood, you know, there were like, what, maybe 12 or so kids in the family and six of the 12 had already died. All that family knew as he grew up was one sibling after another becoming sick and then dying. There were like five others that were sick and then within the possibility of the throes of death. When his soul began to cry out. Why? Because all he'd known was sickness and disease. That was his imagination. There was darkness in his mind concerning some type of light. And uh, I'll never forget reading of how his sister lie dying and his heart just broke. And he said at that time he called the only man that he believed had some type of of faith in his soul, and it was actually Alexander uh, Dowie. And through telegram, he sent to him, my sister's in the throes of death. Please pray. And the response came back, I'm praying she will live. And he said, those words broke through the darkness of what he'd experienced for years, an imagination that was covered up and dark, because of years of sickness and death. And it's like a light broke through that darkness, pierced his soul, and something in him reached out and grabbed his sister and pulled her to his heart as he prayed and his soul broke within him. And just like that, she came back. God touched her life, but his imagination had light in it. And oh, thank God, a story, a powerful word. I remember uh, there in Oklahoma, one of my best friends, uh, Brett Freeman, golf pro, an amazing pastor. Uh, Brett just has an incredible, I mean, if you really want to hear the message of grace and righteousness, it's not because he read a hundred books on it. He, he's got it preaches a wonderful message, hears from God, such a good friend. And we, were, as we were enjoying our friendship, obviously there was a lot of our friendship that had to do with being off the golf course and his ability to help me, which, which his help was great, but I think my ability to assimilate all of his help has, hasn't yet paid off totally, but it will. I'm talking about on the golf course. And so we would talk about things. I remember one day, and I'm pulling into... Our, our home, and there was actually a gate there, so I was putting in a code. And he called me to tell me about one of the families that I knew in his church had just had a baby, and the doctors were saying there was something wrong with this child, and the child wouldn't make it. And I remember saying, the child will live, and the child won't die, and you tell those parents, I said, that child is going to make it, and there's nothing wrong with that child. This is a lie. Well, Brett told me later, he said, Jimmy, when you said that, it's like something just went into me. And I thought, yeah, that's right. Exactly. The child's going to be fine. And how he even conveyed the message is what broke through in their hearts and faith, glory to God in God. 
the power of God to produce a new thought and a new imagination, something you grab a hold of, and all of a sudden, the power of the Lord has this wonderful track to run on, so to speak, like a train, and boom, you're at the end, and that baby just came out like that, perfect and whole, and the report was completely changed. Exactly like John Lake. This is what it's talking about here when it says this. And it goes on seeing, saying here, um, uh, let's see if I can get back to here. Being alienated from the life of God. Alienation means isolated from the life. It means becoming a non-participant in the life of... Now, let me ask you a question. What is it that brought a change to your soul? The life of Jesus Christ. And it came because his finished work made you so perfect and so holy that you became righteous in Christ. And that righteousness paved the way for the very life and nature of God to so change the molecules of your spiritual being that the old man who was a sinner is completely done away with, annihilated. You can't even dig up his grave. There is no grave. But you are a new creation, a new species. And the composition of the species of being a God-man is the life and nature of God, Zoe. It is 100% the power of God. There is no darkness. There is no sickness. It's 100% proof. Perfection. That's what's in you. And do you realize these perversions, the changing of your imagination, the darkening, the going about an imagination the way the world sees it, it alienates you, makes you a non-participant in the very thing that changed your life and made you brand new and whole. That's something to think about. Why is imagination so powerful and important? Well, we don't talk about it enough, but people use their imagination every single day. And even at, when you sleep, the power of your imagination in your dreams is working. Real quickly, I'll go to the rest of this right here. And it says, um, they're alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. The ignorance that is in them is a lack of knowledge. Because of the blindness of their heart. And blindness of their heart means blindness of their imagination. Which means their heart has become calloused or hardened. How can your heart become calloused or hardened? Very simply, by seeing the wrong picture. And then real quickly, our time is almost up. Ephesians 1, 18 and 19, and we'll come back here. It says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. This is Paul's prayer. We're going to come back and look at this for the Ephesians, but it's his prayer for us that we would have our imagination flooded with light and begin to see the correct picture because that is the influence of why you say what you say and you do what you do. Wow, so, so good. Uh, I can just read here real quickly. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll read this. It says, hello, it's me again. <laughs> I like that. My last email to you was speaking about rejoicing in my uh, grace adventures while struggling with lingering symptoms in my body. Since that time, I have encountered truths of why that was happening. First of all, I was allowing, allowing the devil to convince me that it was going to be difficult to get rid of the symptoms. Acknowledging that lie to be possible was connecting me to the manifestation of the symptoms. You've spoken often about our connection to God being our source of life flowing into our body. I was acknowledging that while I was also acknowledging my connection to lying symptoms. As James teaches us, when I waver, I get nothing from God, even though he has already given me everything he has. Granted, daily headaches and dizziness is not fun to deal with, but I had to get to the end of the stupid process of fluctuating daily from the truth of God and the lies of the devil. Also, in one of your messages, you tell about a man that came up for ministry and began to tell you that he believed in Jesus was his healer. You finally got him to admit that he didn't believe anything that he had just confessed. Then he was able to receive the power of God from you and walked away healed. I'm admitting the same thing. I had a measure of believing when I was ministered, ministering to others. 
and have seen several miracles and healings. With my own situation, there was something blocking. I was being hypocritical when dealing with my own life and body. I was experiencing the feeling of symptoms, so I wasn't allowing my spirit man to rise up and stop the deception. The reason for this message today is to tell you that I will not continue in the bondage of letting the symptoms continue. Jesus deserves my gratitude and praise for who he is and for what he has done. I will walk in that truth. Thank God I like that so much because of the truthfulness of the heart. And for you, those symptoms disappear. The head becomes normal. The pain ceases. The dizziness leaves. I release my faith. If there's someone else, take this right now. There's so many healings are starting to take place because we're getting over into this place where they function when we see it, we realize it. It's truth, and it's happening in you right now. I know this video went a little bit long, so I'll just end by saying get people to come to Adventures of Grace YouTube channel and subscribe. Do you know we actually have about a 1,000 subscribers right now that listen, and maybe there's others that listen to haven't subscribed. So things are growing. People are getting changed. Testimonies are coming in. I'm backed up. I'm going to have to take a session just to read testimonies. You can go to Jim Hockett and Ministry Facebook page and follow us. But for sure, on our website, you go to jhmi at jimhockaday.com and email us your grace stories. Until, until next time, God bless you.